figure I'll give you guys a little teaser of uh, things to come. So, I got the turret back together, put the cover back on, and I got a chuck key from Amazon Claws. The, uh, the chuck was not moving very well with the key. Well, I didn't have a key, but I was trying to use a screwdriver and the thing would not budge. So what I did was I shot some oil into the, uh, the keyways for the jaws and down inside of it. And I tried to crack it apart, but there's a, a little set screw in the back that holds this barrel in place for the gear train, for the scroll. And I couldn't seem to get that screw out. I'd back it out and it would get to a certain point and I couldn't jimmy it out of the hole, whatever. But wound up just pulling all the jaws out once I got the key. Cleaned the jaws up. There was a lot of crap in between the uh, the teeth. Got everything lined up, and so I've been just working it in and out a little bit. I, once I did that, I found out that the turret was out of alignment. So what I did was, you're not supposed to use a test indicator to do it because they're susceptible to gravity, but I don't have a coax indicator to chuck up. So I just... Uh, stuck a where is it I stuck this 3 8 inch spot drill into the chuck brought station number one in carefully and eyeballed it to center put the test indicator into the chuck jaws and then I just swept the center of the bore these four little screws here you knock these free and the whole turret comes right off I actually took it off and I held it in my hand before. I was like, this is neat. I still can't get over how cool this little machine is. Um, but I have I have my turret logic pretty much buttoned up. It's still a little ugly, and I have to create a uh, I have to create an M code routine to handle this B5 variable. But what I've got, if I close this out. Open it back up. Once it loads, touch screen works pretty well. Home it out. Humming sequence works good. Jogging with the touch screen. Not bad. There is a slight delay when you pull your finger off, but as long as you uh, as long as you don't hold it when you get too close to something, it's not bad. I've got the turtle jog set up for 15 inch a minute jog movement, which is adequate. And then I've got all the increments at work and all that stuff. I'm going to uh, start putting together. Where is it? I'm gonna start putting together my operator panel one of these days. Um, but anyway, so if I go into ladder, go to my VARs, if I activate this B5, what this does is it sets an overrun on my counter. So if I, I'll maximize this for you. When I overrun that counter, this guy at the bottom here He's just kind of tagging along for the ride, but he's got a bunch of little comparisons inside of here with assignments. So what I do is from here, I can call up pretty much any tool I want. What if I do a T1M6 just to show? It finds number one because of the, the index pulse that I have in the encoder. So if I want to go to tool number eight, and it'll go to tool number eight. So really what I want to do is I just want to create an M code routine. I'm going to change the B5 from an internal to an external input. And then from there, I just create the M code that toggles that on and off and then just does a T1M6 internally, and that will essentially just zero return the turret when I use it 
There's another way that I could do this as well. Once I get the... Well, the, the, the two ways I can do it is that if I... Go into the advanced settings. There's a reload tool on start option in Gmoka Pi. And what I could do with that is instead of having to write a homing sequence here, I can have it to where it calls up the last tool that was used, which would usually or always be the last station that was called up. And then at that point, you know, shoot the data over back and forth between these two counters. I think I can get rid of this counter. I did try to get rid of the counter, and <laughs> my logic got messed up, but I haven't really had a lot of time to play with this too much. So right now it's working the way I intended it to work. It's still a work in progress, but it works 95% per, perfect, except for the homing sequence. So depending on how I want to handle it, if I want to set that option to reload the tool and then just have it every time it cycles around every time it cycles around it it re establishes counter zero for the first position anyway so it's not like i would ever lose lose where i'm going but the way that it's set up now i'm kind of happy with just you know call it up overrun the counter zero return it with a t1 and all good. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm to a point now where I've got a working chuck. I've got an aligned turret. I've got turret logic that works. I've got software that seems to be working very nicely. I haven't had much issue with uh, servo timing or anything like that. I've got my servo time set up to, I think, 140,000 gazilla seconds or whatever the hell they are. So, um, haven't had any issues with that. Everything seems to be working smoothly. As long as I keep the Wi-Fi off, I don't have any issues. But if I have the Wi-Fi on, you should see what this thing does. You go to you turn the Wi-Fi on. If you move the machine while you're trying to surf to your favorite YouTube channel, um, <laughs> the whole thing starts going... <laughs> like, it just loses it. So, I, uh, I keep the Wi-Fi off. And with the, uh, the Raspbian... You just have the little icon here to turn it on, turn it off. And then the one next to it is Ethernet. Um, I installed Network Manager, which is one of the one of the ways in Linux that you can run Ethernet and Wi-Fi at the same time. But I don't get the same I don't get the same GUI as I do on Debian 10 in the Raspberry Pi OS, but there's a text file you have to go and, and modify and make up a little tweaks to to get everything set up properly. I'll do a I'll do a video on that when I remember <laughs> where all those files are at. I do have uh, I did install I installed a couple of programs. I installed. Do, 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 do. Where did I install? I don't even remember what I installed. I installed. I installed Genie. I installed Glade in case I wanted to make uh, make some buttons or whatever. I put Chromium on here. Uh, G Debbie. I, I think uh, I put Synaptic on here and G Debbie. Oh, I just I, I teeter between the two of them. Um, onboard, obviously, we need onboard for the touchscreen. Um, touchscreen calibration. Things like that. There, there were certain, you know, there, it was very scarce as far as what the software that came on it. So I just put a few things on, and I still have plenty of space on the SD card. And I mean, for you know, for what it is, and for what I'm doing with it, I am tickled pink. So that uh, pretty much wraps up my little short video, which is damn near rounding 10 minutes at this point but thanks for uh thanks for watching thanks for hanging out with me tonight and uh see you in the next update